Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar, and in today's data culture video, we are taking a closer look at that concept of discipline at the core and flexibility at the edge that we introduced in the previous video. Let's take a look. In our last video, we looked at the relationship between IT and business for managed self-service BI. And we introduced the relationship between the two and the partnership between those two important roles as being critical to a successful data culture. And at the end of the last video, we introduced some of the work that Microsoft Finance has done and the concepts that they have of a well-managed core of data. So the data that they need to ensure that all business decisions related to finance are being made using a single version of the truth that represents that managed core, plus the use of Power BI and other self-service BI tools like Excel to allow analysts in business to do the flexible work that they need to do without being bounded by IT deliverable schedules and priorities. But what does this mean? It's nice to know that a giant organization like Microsoft Finance can use it, but how do we generalize it? This is one way we can look at that generalization. Now, this is a graphic that I have sh stolen shamelessly from the Power BI Adoption Framework. Look in the links below for a link to the Adoption Framework and the rest of its resources as well. But the key thing here is that there are some things that need to be more tightly controlled. Typically, these are things related to compliance, or core business operations. So these are the things that are in your enterprise data warehouse. These are the things that are in or derived from your ERP system that is used to run those core business processes. And possibly, if we look further down this pyramid or further down this triangle, you could actually see that there may be some additional things such as departmental uh, usage or the scorecards that are used to determine employee success or, or risk identification. But all the way down at the bottom, at the opposite end of the spectrum, there are data and use cases that should be subject to looser controls. These are things like personal reporting. You know, I should be able to use Power BI desktop for whatever purposes I need, I should be able to connect to data, make decisions, visualize and analyze and predict, and not be subject to rigorous control. But as I go from personal use to reporting out to my project or to the broader team or to the organization that my team is part of, at some point as I move up this hierarchy, additional controls will be relevant and additional controls will be appropriate as well. And you can see that there is a red line uh, that I've put in this diagram here. So there's a red line labeled consistent criteria and responsibilities. The label is important. The position is arbitrary. I've put it here just as a straw man or as an idea. The specific cutoff where some responsibilities will uh, apply and others will not is going to be based on your organization and the culture that you're building. Now, the next diagram that I'm showing is not coming from a Microsoft resource. So it's not from the adoption framework. It's not from our executive briefing deck. This is actually coming from a 2017 blog post from the information management vendor Informatica. And the URL is on the slide, and it's in the links down below, and it's not really related to building a data culture. It's related to data management, master data, and data governance, but it's really relevant here from a conceptual perspective because it really clearly makes a specific and important point. You can't do everything, everywhere, all the time, and you need to pick your battles. In this blog post, Informatica is talking about data quality and metadata management for big data. So if you were in the industry 10 years ago, you remember when big data was the, the burning uh, data industry term where we talked about volume and velocity and variety. And eventually we started adding veracity 
uh, in there as well. And these three or four Vs clearly summarized the change in the data landscape. It was no longer data being produced by human action. Now the vast majority of data is being produced as telemetry or as the exhaust of automated systems. And 10 or 20 years ago, an organization could ensure the quality of all of their data if they chose to do so. It wasn't always easy and it wasn't always cheap, but it was possible for the motivated and the well-funded. But in the big data era, so again, 2017, when this blog post is coming out, it's becoming more and more obvious that in order to have an effective data management strategy, you need to identify that core that you need to manage well and tightly and rigorously. So looking at the slide or looking at the diagram, uh, Informatica calls out that for those key data elements, you need full documentation, end-to-end -end lineage, data quality checks at every touch point, and all data owners and data stewards clearly identified. Now, if we step back a little, you can't really do that for everything in your enterprise, can you? So we've got that core in the diagram, but as we move further out and out and out, as the scope and the scale of the data increases and the business criticality of the data decreases, the rigor that you use to manage and to maintain that data decreases as well. And this is true of managed self-service BI, just as it is true of information management or metadata management and data quality. Every organization, when they're building a data culture to put in place that relationship between business and IT and identifying for their implementation of managed self-service BI that their data culture will be built on, there needs to be agreement and a clear understanding of what we manage tightly, what we manage loosely, and where a given data source or application or team or work stream fits into that spectrum. And whether you're looking at uh, an organization that is currently very locked down and looking to be more flexible, or an organization that is currently very flexible and trying to, to see how they can wrangle things in and to be more managed, there will always be pain and struggle in this regard. But understand that if you try to apply a one-size-fits-all approach to a complex and diverse data estate, you will not be successful. You cannot apply rigorously and pedantically the same set of rules to every part of the ecosystem because they don't apply equally. And a key part of a successful data culture is getting the agreement with the help from that uh, very important executive sponsor to get the agreement on what restrictions and what policies apply where. I hope this was valuable. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much.